Hello and welcome along to the next in the series of videos where we are looking at uh, installing and configuring and generally setting up Chocolatey for usage within an organizational context. Now in the previous videos we have looked at really preparing uh, for deploying Chocolatey into an environment. We've downloaded, we've internalized Chocolatey in the different components. Uh, we've done that on our workstation machine. Uh, so that's a machine that will always have access to the internet. What we're looking at today is setting up another machine, uh, our Nexus repository, that uh, doesn't have access to the internet. So we're gonna look at uh, what we need to do to install and configure Chocolatey on that machine and then look at quickly look at the uh, setup and configuration of the Nexus repository uh, for the feeds that we're going to use within our, our organization. So let's jump in. So this is me on my workstation machine. This is the one that we've configured previously. Um, you'll see that I've included uh, BG info information at the top here. So that was part of the last video that we did. So now uh, I should be able to uh, easily identify which machine we're on at any given time. So what we've got over here is the new machine. So this is our Nexus repository. This is literally a brand new VM that I've just spun up. Uh, it's got nothing installed on it. So I wanna look to get uh, Chocolatey installed in an offline machine. So this machine is not gonna be able to reach out to the internet. And I'm gonna try and ensure that that is, is the case. Um, but if I can't quite get it to work, then let's, trust that the steps that I am doing here would work in an offline scenario. So let's open up Internet Explorer uh, initially, uh, and we will, so this machine currently has access to the internet, uh, but that's something I'm gonna try and force to not be the case. I just wanna bring up the docs that we're gonna really be looking at today. So down here in the how to section, there is the how to deploy into an organization. And the ones that we've done so far is we've been through the requirements, we've been through the uh, prepare for internal use. So it's really this one that I'm gonna be looking at initially. So this is uh, how do I set up this machine uh, with no access to the internet? So the way that we're gonna do that is, um, let me open up another page here just so that we have some more information before we go into an offline scenario. There's another section here that talks about uh, setting up a package repository, and then there is a link to uh, using a different repository that I want to have open as well. Okay, so um, what I'm going to do initially is the if you read through the and we'll read through the offline uh, script that we're going to be using in a minute. But what it wants us to do is it wants us to bring over all of the files that we uh, put onto our workstation machine. So these two machines uh, are running on the same network. Um, so I'm going to uh, jump over to the C drive of that workstation machine. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna copy some files onto this machine. So I'm literally gonna pick up, this is the same as if I were using uh, the sneaker net. So I've, I've, if I put all these files on a USB drive, bring them over to this other machine, I'm sort of cheating at the minute a little bit, um, but just for the sake of the demo, uh, I'm gonna copy over all of these uh, chocolatey setup files onto this machine as well. So what's included in those files are the uh, offline installation script that we're gonna talk through in just a second. So let's bring over all of these files and then I'm going to try to disconnect this machine from the internet. So the way I'm gonna try and do that is I'm going to go up to my network settings and I'm gonna look in my uh, network and internet. I'm gonna look in here and then I'm going to change the adapter settings. Yeah, I'm going to attempt to disable this ethernet card. So in theory, if I were to try and go out again to something, google.co.uk, then we've got no access to the internet. And if we open up a PowerShell window, because we're going to need one of those for later anyway, I'm going to pin this to the taskbar and I'm gonna change this to run under an administrator. So I don't have to remember to do that later. And if we, uh, this is a new machine, so it isn't set up. So let's go and make this font a little bit bigger so that we can see it on the video. And then as a result, let's make the window a little bit bigger, a smaller, sorry. And let's just ping an IP address. 
Okay, so we've got no internet connection or no ne uh, internet connection at the minute. So we are truly in a scenario where we won't be reaching out to the internet. Okay, so if we go over here and we look at the setting up of Chocolatey on a machine without network access, it's very similar to what we uh, said before uh, in a previous video, where uh, the documentation walks you through step by step of exactly what you need to do. So you can literally, you can follow along these steps uh, and, and step through them. And there will be a mention of um, what needs to be done, uh, whether you're on a chocolate for business, whether you're on a trial, etc. cetera. Uh, so it will distinguish what needs to be done, uh, whether what context you're in. So in the context of these demos uh, that I'm doing here, I am a business customer. So I have access to, I have a chocolate license file. I have a uh, uh, access to the chocolate license feed. So I can download the packages directly from the license feed. If you're on a trial, that's uh, maybe not necessarily gonna be the case. Uh, so you may need to reach out to uh, the sales team to help get the packages that you need. So. What we are interested in, though, is at the bottom of this section, there is a, a script that we should be able to run. So I'm going to copy this. Uh, and again, the only uh, the only um, uh, tools I have available to me on this machine are uh, Notepad. Um, so let me just uh, zoom in a little bit. I had to do this in the last video. So let's zoom in a little bit here so that we can all see it. And I think we did a couple more. So we'll talk through what this script is doing. And the same... A uh, caveat that I gave before is that obviously uh, this is a script that you get from the internet. You want to make sure that you read through it, uh, understand what it's doing before running it within, within your environment. So uh, again, here, in order to execute uh, these scripts, we will need to modify the execution policy, uh, but it's done on the per process level, so it will go away uh, once that process has ended. Uh, it's going to look for this uh, chocolate install.ps1 file. That's the one that we downloaded uh, in our previous video. So let's just go ahead and just check to make sure that these files are now in place. So in my file ex uh, Windows Explorer here, if I go to my uh, chocolate setup folder and I go into the file section, then I do indeed have a chocolate local install file. So that's the local equivalent of the install script that you can get from chocolate.org. So in the previous video, we used the install script that came directly from chocolate.org to do that initial uh, setup and uh, configuration. In this one, we're not reaching out to the internet, so we're gonna use the equivalent of that script, which is this chocolatey local install.ps1. Uh, what we're doing here, this is the same uh, mention that we went through before. If you need uh, FIPS compliant checksums, then you can definitely enable that feature. Uh, this one is slightly, this setup is slightly different. So uh, once you're in an offline scenario, an organizational context, uh, we don't recommend that you use the community feed uh, on chocolate.org. So what this uh, two lines of scripts are doing here is one is removing the uh, chocolate.org feed. So it's removing that source. So it will no longer be able to reach out and get packages from there. And the second one here is it's adding a new source. So Chocolatey works on the premise of it can have multiple sources, whether it's uh, internal, external, uh, Nexus, Artifactory, etc. So in this one, we're adding a local uh, file system source, which is pointing at our C Choco setup packages folder. So currently, um, I seem to have lost my workstation machine. Let's try that again. Oh, of course we have, because we have uh, disconnected from the network. So we, we definitely have done that, but we've got my local copy, sorry. So uh, on the previous video, we went through a process of downloading and internalizing packages uh, that we would need. So in here, we have uh, Chocolate itself, we have uh, an extension, the extension package, we have the agent, we have the code extension, we have uh, all the packages that we would want to need to set up Chocolate on this uh machine. So that's what we're doing there. We're setting up our source to point at that folder and it will be able to consume the packages that are contained within that folder. The other part here is it's going to uh, place, so this is the exact same as the one we did previously, uh, within the, that files folder uh, we have the chocolate license.xml file. So this script will place that license file into the right location on disk so that it will be able to use it. And then we're going to go ahead and disable the chocolatey license feed. Now, the reason that we're doing that is because, um, let's talk Let's talk through this. So 
the chocolate license feed by default is where you would consume packages from. But in an organizational context, you're going to have your own repository server. So we're going to want you to download and internalize those uh, artifacts if you need them. Uh, so every time you run chocolatey, uh, it will attempt, or, or rather, let me say this, every time you run chocolatey once it's licensed, it will attempt to recreate that source, that chocolate license source if it doesn't exist. And that's just the way chocolate works. It needs that feed to be there. Uh, but what we're doing here in this context is we're disabling it. So previously up here, we removed the chocolate.org feed. Um, but here we're just disabling it because if we removed it, it would put it straight back again. So we leave it in place, but we just disable it. Okay. So that's why that's done slightly differently. Then with the license in place, we'll go ahead and we will uh, install the chocolate license extension. Uh, we'll do the same configuration options that we did in the previous script. Uh, so this one, uh, I'll call this out again here. There are lots and lots of information about the different configuration settings within Chocolate, uh, both for the OSS version and for the license version. So I encourage you to go and have a look at those if you have a second. Uh, and then we'll set and we'll set up and configure the same features that we did before. So that's what we're going to do. So I'm going to save this so that I I can run it. Uh, so let's just put this into our let's create a temp folder here. That's the way I typically do things. So I've got a temp folder. And then in here, we will call this uh, local install.ps1. Now, the one file that we haven't looked at yet is this chocolatey local install.ps1. So what is this doing? So this is uh, what we need to use to install chocolatey. So this is the equivalent of the one that would come from chocolatey.org for doing the install of chocolatey. So by default, what is this attempting to do? This is, uh, if we're using an internal uh, repository, we're not quite at that point yet, so we won't use that one. Uh, uncommon, so we're not gonna be searching from the internet, so that will leave that commented out. And it's asking us to update this path. So it's expecting that there's gonna be C, choco setup packages, uh, and then the package that we want is 01015. So let's have a look at this, make sure that that's right. So 01015, so we had to update that to make that work. Uh, so I'm gonna save that. And the the rest of this should be pretty much self-explanatory. It, 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 it's almost exactly the same as the one that comes from the install.ps1 from chocolate.org, but it's just tweaked to run in a local context. So although it's got methods called download file, etc., it's really just going to be downloading it from that location. So it's a, literally a file copy at that point. Okay, so I'm going to try this out. So if I go over here and I go into my C temp folder, I have that local install.ps1. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to I'm going to try and run that file. Now let's see if we can have some folders open. So here's our program data folder where things are likely going to end up. So let's let's prepare our screen a little bit so we can see what's going on. So let's go ahead and run this file. So it's found that uh, chocolate.zip file uh, in our packages folder and it's attempting to uh, move it over and copy it over and then do the installation. So what we should here, so we've now got program data chocolatey folder. So it's been able to do that part. So it's been able to install chocolatey. It's running through the configuration. Though that red text, that yellow text was the uh, chicken and the egg situation that we spoke about before, where uh, when you're installing the chocolatey extension, the license file needs to be in place. And as soon as the license file is in place, it expects the extension to be in place. So that's what the uh, red text and the yellow text was there, uh, was happening. Once everything's set up and configured, you won't need to do that again. Uh, so at this point, it's now uh, doing the installation of the Chocolatey extension. So that's bringing in the license components uh, into Chocolatey. So at the minute, it's setting up Package Builder. But if we have a look here to see what our script's done, if we look in the license folder within the C program data Chocolatey uh, installation location, we now have that Chocolatey license in place. And if we look in the lib folder, we should see the, those packages coming in. So we've installed Chocolatey and it's installed the Chocolatey.extension or rather it's it's installing the chocolate extension. And what we should end up with after that, if we look back at the script, uh, not that one, it was the C temp folder. Let's open up this one again. 
So we're at the point that we are installing the chocolate extension. Then we've got a little bit of configuration to do, which is just setting up some defaults and some features. And once that's done, we're there. So in this shell, if we run Choco, we've now got chocolate installed and it is the business version. So we've now done a complete installation of chocolatey on a machine that is an air in, in, in an air gapped environment and that we've simulated by uh, disabling the network card. Um, and we're now ready to progress with the next step. So the next step is to install and configure Nexus. So I'm going to stop this video because this video was really just um, the setup and I, I, I always don't want these videos to run too long. So we've done our uh, setup and configuration of our Nexus machine with the base configuration, which is uh, having chocolatey available and set up and ready to go. Uh, and in the next video, we will look at uh, doing the actual installation and configuration of Nexus. So um, I hope that you can join me in the next video. And uh, if this is uh, useful, definitely reach out in the comments and tell me uh, if there's anything that I didn't cover that you wanted me to cover. Again, reach out and I can cover that hopefully in a later video. Thank you very much.